Hi, this is Quad, and in this video, I want to tell you about cardiac action potential adjustment. So here's a typical ventricular action potential, and uh, you can start the next one, another exact same one. So given that initial states are the same here and here, then the event that follows is going to give you the same output. That's why these two look the same. Now, this was the trigger for the action potential here, and this is the trigger for the action potential there. But what happens if you triggered it here? Well, the input here is going to be completely different than input for this one, because input, action potential, recovery, and it gives you the same input, action potential, recovery. But if you kickstart this earlier than the full recovery, then you're gonna have a little bit of a different effect. Well, this action potential here, we're gonna get to the same peak. This is because for this action potential, this action potential, and for this one, voltage-gated sodium channels are used, and they get used up in the beginning, and they will be inactivated, and they'll reactivate. All these events take place before the phase two about to end. So you'll have the same VNAC for this action potential, this action potential, and this one. But you're gonna have a different starting point for the voltage-gated calcium channel. And this is because voltage-gated calcium channel takes a little bit of time to uh, recover. So for this uh, first action potential, if voltage-gated calcium channel shoot up and now it's recovering, but before the voltage gated calcium channel gets a fully recovered, if you start the next one, then you don't have the full amount of voltage gated calcium channel engaged in the second action potential. Suppose you had 100 of VCAC and you're not waiting for the full recovery, you're left with, let's say, 50, half recovered, half didn't. Then the next action potential will have less VCAC uh, being used. What's the consequence of it? Well, VCAC is not going to affect too much of the maximum, but VCAC takes time to reactivate itself. So the next action potential is going to be a little bit tighter because there's less VCAC to inactivate. Again, VCAC leads to ventricular action potential being longer, having the shoulder. So with less VCAC, shoulder of this one is shorter. And there's another contribution, potassium channel, those delayed rectifiers, many potassium channels will not be fully recovered by the time this one starts. So when an actual potential starts, delayed rectifiers start to kick in around here. So here, delayed rectifier kicks in, and they're going to do a lot of a job to pull the membrane action potential down. And then when they're done, they will recover. Same thing here, starts here do the job of pulling things down and recover. But for this activation here, when the activation is on, the delayed rectifier is not fully recovered yet. So it's almost as if you started this delayed rectifier earlier. So for these two, delayed rectifier starts around here, around here, nothing before. But for this action potential, delayed rectifiers is still on when the active strong potential is building. So the result is earlier activation of the delayed rectifier, and maybe slightly more, and combining this not enough VCAC to uh, be part of this action potential, and the carryover of the previous delayed rectifying uh, influence, this action potential is just going to be shorter compared to these two. So in summary, here's one action potential, full recovery. Here's another action potential. They will be the same. But if you kickstart one here, this one is going to be shorter. And this is the cardiac action potential of adjustment. And this is important because this allows you to have a heartbeat that can get fast when you need to. And finally, uh, there's a little interesting analogy here. Here is the ventricular um, action potential, and here is the atrial action potential. So ventricular ones, has this shoulder and atrial ones has less of that shoulder. And the difference between ventricular and atrial ones also differs in the uh, VCAC and then the delayed rectifiers. 
for the ventricular one, there's more VCAC than the atrial one. And for the ventricular one, the delayed rectifiers come in a little bit later than for the atrial one. So this more VCAC and then the later activation is like this one and this one. And here you have less VCAC and the earlier delayed rectifier. Although this is not early, but the overall effect is similar because of the carryover of the previous delayed rectifiers.